So I'm going to talk tonight pretty much a little bit about blending behavioral science and technology. Um, essentially, uh, understanding a little bit about what motivates people, um, the science of, or a little bit of the science of short-term reward versus long-term reward, um, adding simple technology to try and empower people, um, and bringing it together, uh, creating habits. So I'm going to do this in the form of a little bit of a case study. We, um, we had a firm of accountants, and I'm sure you agree, they're not really digitally very savvy. Um, these were partners in an accountancy firm. And th th there they are. Um, they look very fun. And what, what they wanted to do was try and kick themselves a little bit into, um, into the now by getting their partners to, um, to blog and create content for their website. Um, it was quite a lot of a challenge when you bear in mind that in 2014, the average accountant wrote 0.25 of a blog post. Um, so they wanted to try and, uh, try and get the guys to do a little bit more. Um, it's not surprising that they don't do it. Um, essentially, there are some obstacles. Time is money for a fee earner, for an expert in a business. Writing content, unless you're a writer, it's pretty hard work. And, um, and really, there was no incentive for them to do it. They were getting on with what they were doing, and, um, and they were just doing it. And you can, you can see by this graph our starting point. Oh, can't, can everyone see that? Well, essentially, on a scale of 0 to 120, they were doing around about, bubbling along at around about two posts a month um, between them, and they wanted to do something a little bit better. And you can see here, possibly, there's a little bit of a rise um, in, uh, in May. This was because um, one, uh, one of the parts of their annual bonus was linked to them blogging. So this is the effect of several thousand pounds on, uh, on behavior, a, uh, an annual incentive, an annual bonus. Essentially, we had quite a bit of a challenge. Um, and we asked ourselves why that incentive didn't work, why it didn't make them change their behavior and do what they wanted to do. And the other aspect was what could we do to actually change them, make them do something a little bit different. And the reason the incentive is not effective is essentially because we're not alligators. Um, alligators eat very, very rarely. They can go for up to two years without eating. Um, they don't eat between November and March, and they'll eat big meals, and they can go for a long time without eating. So for an alligator, a reward a year away is quite a big incentive. They like that sort of thing. But humans, we need to eat pretty much every day. Um, we need to eat. We could go with a day without eating, but we need to eat a lot. Um, as a consequence, humans are far more motivated by short-term incentives. And if you want an example of this, Try telling your child that Santa won't come if it's bad um, in January and see how effective that is. Tell it the same thing on the 20th of December and you'll find quite a marked change in the child's behaviour. Put a marshmallow in the centre of the table and tell them to wait five minutes. <laughs> yeah, I think I probably would have eaten the marshmallow. <laughs> Alas. <laughs> so we, um, we wondered what we could do to turn things around and change the behaviour of our our accountants. So we started off by um, equipping them with a simple piece of software, essentially um, to try and get rid of the concepts of time and hard work, give them something that made it quicker and easier for them to actually get the knowledge out of their heads and digitized and to share it. Um, we, we made it very simple for them. We popped, so you can probably see that, popped a little bookmarklet in the top of their screen and um, we told them that all they had to do was when they had an opinion on something, that they were reading, they clicked that button, they wrote down what they thought, their opinions, their insights, and they could then share it on the company blog, they could stick it out on social media, um, and they could you know, digitize their thoughts. Um, it's, it's quite important as well that we spent 20 minutes with each one just sort of saying, this is how you do it, and we did all the difficult bit, we linked it up, we installed it, this is how you do it, you press that button. So, um, and. The effect of that technology, as you can see on the far corner, is a fairly dramatic increase in their output. They went from sort of six to, to just over 20 the next month. But we essentially, we still had the problem of motivating them and getting them to actually do it 
on a regular basis and keep them doing it. So here's where we look to a little bit of behavioral science. We looked at goals. Um, I can read this out. In essence, when one recognizes something he or she desires, obtaining it becomes a goal, and that motivation guides behavior to fulfill the goal. Uh, committing oneself to particular goals help, helps define self-identity, and maintaining that identity influences behavior. So we, um, we sent our, our accountants a little bit of a goals questionnaire. We gave them an idea of what doing this could actually do for them and help them achieve in their career. And we asked them to circle some of the goals that they had and commit to sort of carrying out an action on a certain basis. We then looked at incentives and rewards. Um, so we, uh, we split them into two teams. We had 10 accountants split them into two teams of five and we put them up against each other. Um, we offered prizes by way of a bottle of champagne and a small plastic trophy. And it's worth bearing in mind, these guys are partners at a top 100 accountancy firm. If they want champagne, they'll go out and bloody buy it. Uh, but this bottle of champagne was the one that the other guys couldn't have. So it, um, it turned out to be rather a powerful motivator. We gave them feedback, um, or team feedback, in the form of league tables. And, and you can see from here, we, we sent these out on a weekly basis, the winning teams in yellow. And you can see that invariably the winning team dropped the ball the next week, rested on the laurels, and the losing team uh, immediately boosted their output um, and, and did a lot better. And, and essentially, these are, this, is, this is our trigger. Um, triggers are things that, that help you to form habits. You wake up in the morning, you reach for the coffee machine and turn it on, you get to work, you check your emails, it's trigger, habit. So we used, um, we used our trigger, we sent them uh, these league tables and this illustrates the effect of the league table. And you can see after each league table, within a day, their output dramatically increased um, and we actually got them moving along, uh, doing what we wanted them to do. Um, and essentially, if you put that all together, you can see what happened with the bonus worth thousands of pounds, then a little bit of technology, and then mixing behavioral science with simple technology to give you uh, a fairly significant result. They went from two actions um, over the course of a month up to 109. So fairly, uh, fairly major increase. Um, but at this stage, we're a little bit worried that after the competition ended, that if we hadn't properly formed the habit in these guys, they were gonna just nosedive, go back to their two a month. Um, so we, uh, we provided them with individual feedback emails, just telling them how they were doing, how many people were reading their stuff, who was sharing it, how many reposts they had, and we added a call to action as well in the add a new post um, front. And if you ever want to see a really good example of someone that does this well, um, it's TripAdvisor. Did anyone use TripAdvisor? They send you emails. It makes you want to post. Um, and I, for one, am, am very motivated by this. Every time they send me one of these, I review another restaurant. <sighs> the question I usually get asked at this point is what happened next? Um, and this is the graph of the whole year. And you see that after reaching these dizzying heights, they did drop back down but they dropped back down to um, still doing 15 to 20 times more than they'd been doing before. And this was by providing them with something simple and teaching them how to use it and actually using a few very, very simple behavioral science techniques to just keep them at it, keep them interested and keep them doing it. So essentially your takeaways, if you, if you want to try and motivate people in this way, um, keep it simple, software tools, constructs, frictionless. Okay comments from over here. Um, set goals for individuals and teams and let them actually motivate each other. Um, look at short-term rewards. Um, as I say, you can, you can test this on your kids to see how effective short-term rewards can be. Make it fun. Um, Gamification is great. People don't mind being gamed if it helps them to, to achieve a goal that they actually want to achieve. Um, give them feedback, uh, form the habit, and keep it up. And that's what we've done. <laughs> that orange colour's really bad, but... Um, yeah, I was trying to get the brightness to work better on the projector.
So <clears throat> what was the impact on the business? Um, the impact on the business was that their, their online visibility was dramatically improved. Um, they actually they did they did another one of these for the budget day. They got they got them all, sat them in a room with some guys from a law firm, and they produced more content than Deloitte um, in a day. Sent out more, and this is a uh, yeah, this is ten guys in a room. Right, but what, what's the impact on the business? Um, I don't they're, know. They're busy blogging, <laughs> but has it brought in more business? So they have to put more lines in or numbers in there. They, they, they um, wouldn't share their accounts with me, but essentially what they've done is they put themselves out there. Um, they've started creating content. People are starting to perceive them as knowing what they're talking about. Um, and, you know, the science of content, it takes a while for them to build a profile and to actually see, uh, you know, a dramatic return on investments. Um, and in fact, you know, in, in this way, you should be more looking at actually the cost of not doing it potentially. Um, because if this firm's doing it and your firm is another firm of accountants and you're not, then your SEO is not going to be as good, you're not going to be as visible on the social channels, you're not going to be sharing stuff on LinkedIn, and essentially when somebody wants to uh, starts looking for accountant in Oxford, they're going to find these guys and not the other guys. What did you guys do to coach the people creating factory-style content like, on quality? Um, we, we, we just basically talked to them about sharing their opinion um, because as a, so as a partner in an accountancy firm or a law firm or whatever you're doing, you've got an opinion which is based on 20 years of education and learning and continuing and you have your own particular take on something. So that's what we were trying to extract was more not saying we want to turn you into journalists. We were saying, can we suck that knowledge out of your head and you know, let people see what you have to say?